Hello everybody and welcome to another Visualization Network how-to video. Today's topic, interactive area charts in Excel but with no programming. Uh, I'm your host Tom Crawford and let's just jump right in. So now uh, we go back into design mode and we'll just get the rest of them created which will take only a minute. We'll take that object, spin button, copy it, and then we'll paste it. We'll paste it down into the next row and the next one. We'll just continue pasting these. Now it's important to be careful because we don't want to just use these. They're all still pointing to the Raspberry button so we'll change those in just a minute but it's nice to get them all in it first and then change them all quickly. And they're carrying all of the same properties over so that makes it nice. We only have to change the link cell value. We can do the same thing with the conclude. Copy it down. You don't have to worry about lining them up too much. You'll see why in just a second. Notice this really doesn't take very much time. And we'll have a fully interactive graph with absolutely no coding. There we go. The controls are all in place. Let's uh, select them all because they're a little bit out of alignment. As I said, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to placement. I just kind of set them in. We'll go over to the page layout tab and then we'll align them. So you can left align or center align. doesn't really matter which in this case because they're all the same size since we just copied them. And sometimes, you know, my spacing might have, vertical spacing might have been off. So we can always use the distribute vertically function which will make them all nice and perfectly distributed and we'll do the exact same function with the checkboxes which actually were even less aligned again it really doesn't matter so much if you choose center or left we'll choose left in this case and then uh, you can also do the distribute so they space stay nice and spaced evenly so there we go that's all pretty and all we have to do is go change these values. We're still in, look at the developer tab, still in design mode, as you've noticed, because we're able to select it this way. Go into properties, and one at a time, we'll change these to the next lower value. Notice that as I select the next one, I don't need to close and reopen the properties tab. It just keeps it open no matter which one I've selected. You may be wondering, for those of you who are paying very close attention, why I'm going down in numbers from 23, 22, 21, 20, 19 would be next. That's because of the way Excel actually does the charting. Um, it uses a reverse order for reasons I'm not quite sure. So I've sorted it in a way that has smallest to largest based on the first year. So based on that change, I need to do these in reverse order too, which makes it a little harder for demos like this where you have to talk through each of them. And trust me, it's very easy to get those off, so you want to make sure you do that. And notice again, I just switched controls. I didn't need to change the properties window. So I can just move through these very quickly. In fact, I'll move the properties window over to make it closer. And we have 23. And again, it's going to be the exact same values, or it should be, except in a different column. 22, 21, and so on. Close that out. Drop out of design mode. Save this document. Always a good idea. And let's check to make sure we've got everything. So oranges. Let's increase that by 10%. And there we go. It increased. Yep, look at them grow. Go back down. Or maybe we just want to turn it off completely and see oranges disappear. There we go. So there you have it. Interactivity in Excel without programming. Now you'll notice one more thing that's the exception to why this is a little weird compared to the way you might do it in Flash. When you unselect it without code based on the way we've done it, you'll notice that the apples label still stays there. And if I select oranges, it just starts to pile up. It doesn't even matter if I select them out of order, the ones I select uh, like Kiwi, kind of sits on that line. That's a little confusing. There is another way programmatically to have those disappear, and that's to hide those rows. 
So if we go back over to this chart and we take, say, pairs and we hide them, notice it goes from 17 to 19 now, row 18, pairs is hidden. And we go back to our graph, pairs no longer shows up in our graph. So the appropriate way to have this checkbox works, work if you want to get rid of those would be to have a line of code attached to the checkbox that actually hides that row programmatically. But since this was without programming, we'll unhide that row. And it comes back. Pairs is now back in the chart. And we can select this. So if you can live with that fact that the label still shows up, this is a quick way, just a few minutes, to get interactivity in Excel. Hope you enjoyed this session, and I look forward to seeing you on another Visualization Network how-to video.